Hi, this is Brian Forrester, and today we're exploring ancient Teotihuacan, located about two hours from Mexico City. The origins of this place, to be honest, are unknown. We began our adventure in an ancient cave that has been used for at least a thousand years, and here we did a ritual with some Nahuatl or Aztec-speaking people. This involved um, incense and obsidian. And again, this was a complete surprise to our guests, and this was an event arranged by my wife Irene in order to add a spiritual aspect to our exploration. So once the ritual was completed, we walked back out of this ancient cave and began our study of anomalies that we could see at ancient Teotihuacan. The name itself comes from the Aztec, and the Aztec named it, and what that word means is the place where main men became gods. As you can see, Teotihuacan is a huge complex, and the first place that we went to was the Temple of Quetzalcoatl. Now look at the first three courses of stairs, and notice that they're relatively large blocks of basalt that fit very tightly together, and yet the stairs above are composed of smaller pieces of stone. Whether this was from the restoration in the 20th century or repair work done by the Aztec is unknown. But again, you can see in this video clip very large blocks of basalt and the hardest material that the Aztec had for shaping stone was in fact basalt. So this makes it very much an anomaly. Also notice the very rough stonework on the left hand side and above as compared to the staircase. The sculpted heads were done by the Aztec to represent Quetzalcoatl and also Tlaloc, the rain god, but they were likely megalithic blocks that were reshaped by the Aztec. Now common thought is that Teotihuacan was constructed 2,000 years ago, but academics don't know who the original builders were. And as we see the extent and the size of this construction, it again is a very much a mystery. Also notice here the finely shaped blocks in comparison to the rough fill. This is restoration in modern times, but the origin of the even cut blocks again is unknown. Here again we see rough restoration done in the 20th century. But here, once again, notice these basalt steps. They fit together very tightly without mortar, and each one is a different shape and size in comparison to the relative rubble that you saw on the right-hand side. Now we're in the main complex of Teotihuacan, and we're looking at the Temple of the Moon, which is the second largest of the so-called pyramids. And also notice all of these other smaller pyramid-like constructions. Once again, Teotihuacan is vast in scale and was occupied by the original builders, then the Toltec, and then the Aztec found Teotihuacan when they were moving towards what would become their capital city of Tenochtitlan, which means the place of prophecy from their ancestral home called Aztlan, which some people believe could be Atlantis, but whether that's a fact or not is completely unknown. This is the famous Avenue of the Dead, 
and it is approximately one mile long, stretching from the Temple of the Moon to the Temple of Quetzalcoatl, way in the background. And now we're walking towards the largest of the so-called pyramids. This is the Temple of the Sun, huge in terms of scale. I believe the footprint is larger than that of the, uh, the Great Pyramids of Giza. So here you see the sense of scale, the tiny humanoid figures or people walking up and down the steps in comparison to the huge size of the pyramid itself. Beautifully bilaterally symmetrical. How this was achieved, again, is unknown, and who made it originally is unknown. So now we're going to walk towards the front of the Temple of the Sun, and you're going to see more anomalies in terms of the stonework as we approach. As you can see, most of the stonework is relatively small volcanic stone with volcanic ash used as a type of mortar. But as we approach, you're going to see once again much larger blocks of basalt that are almost scattered around. We don't know where their original positions were, and I suspect that this stonework is much, much older than the pyramid itself. And here again a view of the large basalt stones, likely reshaped, at least the fronts of, during Aztec times. And curiously, a door that goes into the pyramid. Is this part of a tunnel system? We don't know because the door is locked. And once again, large blocks of basalt in comparison to the much smaller stones of much rougher composition. Some of the basalt blocks you can see have been interlocked into the structure. And again, whether this was done during restoration in the 20th century, or whether this is Aztec reconstruction, is presently unknown. So, it appears that Teotihuacan shows evidence of lost ancient high technology. And in the other videos I'm going to be making about our recent trip in February of 2019, you'll see other examples of anomalies in terms of construction. Very fine work as compared to rougher work. And here again in this staircase, notice the nicely shaped blocks and then some broken. Clearly this staircase has been reassembled. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you are a subscriber. This of course is a quadcopter view. Unfortunately, I was caught by the police and given a reprimand for filming, but I'm hoping to return to Mexico once a year, probably in January and February of each year, with a tour group, and you can join us at HiddenIncaTours.com. And this is my book about lost ancient technology aspects of Mexico, available at Amazon. And come and meet me at Contact in the Desert in Indian Wells, California in June 2019.